In the 1860s, Swiss chemist Friedrich Miescher discovered human DNA. This revelation helped scientists unlock secrets about our ancient ancestors. Even in 2018, researchers were making new discoveries. This particular excavation revealed several ancient secrets, including a previously unknown group of ancient humans. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. In 2018, archaeologists unearthed the skeletons of two Native American infants. Both were 11,500 years old and part of the same family. In the early 2000s, anthropology professor Ben Potter began working in Upward Sun River, Alaska. This forested area is 50 miles from Fairbanks and can only be reached by helicopter. Despite the difficult terrain, Potter had good reason for excavating there. That part of Alaska was originally connected to Europe and Africa. When Pangaea began breaking up, some strips of land still connected the continents. The earliest known humans were born in Africa, but they migrated across the world. Beringia was the bridge that connected Siberia and Alaska. Many archaeologists believe that the first North American humans came from that bridge over 34 zero years ago. However, this was just a theory. Although many historians believe that early humans crossed Beringia, they do not know who did so. One theory, called the Beringian Standstill Hypothesis, attempts to answer this. The hypothesis says that the ancient Beringians lived on Beringia in isolation due to the ice and harsh climate. If this is true, the Beringians might be the sole ancestors of all Native Americans. According to archaeologist Jennifer Raff, the name Upward Sun River is a translation from the Athabascan Zasa Na, the language of the Native Americans who still live in Alaska. It is also part of their territory. Potter collaborated with the natives for his excavations. In 2010, Potter and other researchers from the University of Alaska searched Upward Sun River. They discovered the cremated remains of a three-year-old child. At 11,500 years old, this discovery was exceptionally rare. Unfortunately, the skeleton was not preserved enough to extract DNA from. Scientists could not even figure out the gender. Despite their limited success, Potter and his team did not give up. They continued to excavate in that area for eight more years. Then, Potter and his colleagues, Jose Victor Moreno Meyer and Lasse Vinner, found their big break. They unearthed a burial site in an area of Alaska that was around 15,000 years old. There, Potter and his team discovered two infant skeletons. One seemed to be a stillborn. The other was between 6 and 12 weeks old. Like the three-year-old, the two seemed to have been cremated as their remains rested on a fire pit. The two infants were buried beneath multiple items and covered in red ochre. This ochre, which was likely part of the funeral process, further preserved the skeletons. The babies were also buried beneath a mixture of sand and soil. This high acidity mixture is ideal for conservation. Clearly, the people who buried them loved them dearly. DNA testing revealed that both infants were girls and that they were both related, possibly first cousins. The local native community named the girls Zakaiti Anantid Gai, Sunrise Girl Child, and Yokonantid Gai, Dawn Twilight Girl Child. This grave site was clearly important to the mourners. Archaeologists discovered many other items in the grave, such as antler and spear points. Both girls were buried together in a joint funeral. However, Sunrise Girl, the six-week-old infant, seemed to be better preserved and served as the basis for most of the DNA results. To examine the DNA, geneticists had to dig into the mitochondria. Science students remember the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell because without it, cells die. Usually, researchers test the petrous bone, which is at the base of the skull. Because the three-year-old's bones were too damaged, researchers could not test the DNA. But with the two infants, they could. The first round of DNA tests performed at the University of Alaska revealed the ethnicity of Sunrise Girl. According to the results, she was closely related to Native Americans, but in a distinct way. Scientists believe that her DNA is far older than any previously tested remains. In other words, she is a previously unknown genetic population of Native Americans. This previously unknown DNA, which scientists dubbed U.S. Roan, dates back at least 20,000 years and possibly as far back as 34,000. Eski Willerslev, the study's co-author and professor at the University of Copenhagen, 
says that they are the oldest known Native Americans to date. Sunrise Girls' DNA lends credence to the Beringian standstill hypothesis. Scientists believe that she might be an ancient Beringian that experts had only theorized about beforehand. We think the explanation for this pattern, the one that requires the least movement, was that Native Americans were somewhere in Beringia 20,000 years ago, explained Victor moreno Meyer, another author of the study. The first DNA analysis was done on the six-week-old's skull. Geneticists expected the second infant to have similar DNA. But surprisingly, she didn't. Dawn Twilight Girl, the stillborn, was examined at the University of Copenhagen, Denmark. She had an entirely different maternal lineage compared to her first cousin, and the lineages were not related. Geneticists have separated Native Americans into two branches, Northern and Southern. The Northern group came from East Asia and likely inhabited North America, including Alaska and Canada. At some point, the group split and the Southern Native Americans migrated to South America. They all descended from the ancient Beringians, but the separation created variations in their DNA. In simpler terms, DNA tests indication that both girls belonged to two separate groups. Sunrise Girl belonged to the ancient Beringias, while Dawn Twilight Girl came from another ethnicity, one more closely related to the Northern Native Americans. This begets the question, how did these two groups of people end up in the same place at the same time? Surprisingly, Sunrise Girl did not belong to either of these groups. This means that the ancient Beringians split into at least three groups, if not more. With demographic modeling, scientists estimated that Native Americans left East Asia 36, zero years ago. By 20,000 years ago, this group split. But if they split, why were these two infants buried together? In the study, archaeologists hypothesized that the two groups stuck together at least once, hence why the girls were related. They proposed two possibilities for this. The Beringians might have split before crossing the bridge, only to reunite later. Or the Beringians might have separated after crossing. Potter prefers the latter theory. Potter has a theory for how these two groups came together. During an interview with The Atlantic, he suggested that both groups independently crossed Beringia. Perhaps they traveled on different paths at separate times. Usually, this theory would seem a bit far-fetched but there is some evidence to back it up. In 2017, archaeologists examined the bluefish caves in Canada's Yukon Territory. According to a study on these caves, scientists found evidence of human-cut markings that were 24,000 years old. If this is accurate, as Raff believes it is, then humans had crossed Beringia at least 24,000 years ago. That was over a decade before the two girls were born. Although the discovery of the girls proved many hypotheses, it also raised several questions. What happened to the Beringians? How did they get to Siberia in the first place? Given how rare these findings are, it is unlikely that these questions will be answered soon. And to make things more complicated, not all experts are on board with Potter's theories. The main argument against this finding is just that it's a single finding. Dennis O'Rourke, a geneticist and archaeologist, says that the one sample is not enough evidence to study the entire human population. We could know something about the extent of diversity in this early Beringian population with greater certainty if we had multiple genomes, O'Rourke told the Smithsonian Magazine, but finding more than one sample is easier said than done. It's hard to impress upon you how rare they are. Potter told The Atlantic. According to co-researcher Willerslev, before this finding, scientists only had modern-day Alaskans and Siberians to study this genome. Without more samples, nobody will know where the Beringians came from. Despite the age of Upward River's burial grounds, archaeologist Brian T. Weigel claims that it is too young to understand early humans. The earliest proven trace of human activity in eastern Beringia dates to around 14.1 thousand years ago, Wiggle explained, making the Upward Sun River site nearly 3,000 years too young to be representative of the initial human colonization of the New World. After Potter's study released, which is in the scientific journal Nature, many have asked what happened to the Beringians. We don't know, Potter told CNN. Again, this question needs more evidence to answer. However, Potter plans to take DNA samples from the neighboring residents. Since scientists know what Beringian DNA looks like, they can determine if the gene still exists in natives. Research has revealed a snapshot of the Beringian's life. According to Potter, they were expert hunters, eating bison, elk, rabbits, squirrels, and birds. 
they likely hunted through organized parties. Potter also found evidence of salmon exploitation dating back 6,000 years, meaning that the Beringians likely fished and traded as well. Potter suggested that the Beringian gene might have assimilated into the indigenous peoples of Alaska. This is a natural consequence of evolution. It is possible that incoming Athabascan ancestors, who are widespread throughout the region today, replaced or absorbed the ancient Beringians inhabiting that area, Potter claimed. If that is true, many people might have Beringian blood and not even know it. The implications of Chris's case reached scientists far beyond Nevada. One nagging question was, would Chris remain the same person with someone else's DNA? Dr. Andrew Rizvani, a blood and marrow transplant expert at Stanford University, says yes. Their brain and their personality should remain the same, he told The Independent, noting that a female donor would not change Chris's sex. Although doctors understood the DNA change, they saw no medical issues as long as the transplant succeeded. The patient's mind and history remained intact, but to forensic scientists, the DNA change had serious consequences. For criminal investigators, DNA is a trusted tool for identifying suspects. Chris's altered DNA raised concerns. If swabs point to two individuals in different parts of the world, what happens? Brittany Chilton, a criminalist, warned that such changes could mislead investigations and cause wrongful accusations. In 2004, Alaska authorities found a DNA match in their database only to realize the suspect was in jail at the time of the crime. It turned out his brother had received his bone marrow and was later convicted. This scenario highlighted the forensic challenges that chimerism poses. Another case in 2008 involved a car crash victim in South Korea. DNA testing suggested the victim was female, but the body was male. He had received a transplant from his daughter. Cases like this reveal how chimeras, people with two sets of DNA, can complicate both criminal investigations and medical identifications. In 2002, Lydia Fairchild applied for child support but was told she wasn't biologically related to her children. A witness even confirmed the birth of her third child. Yet DNA said otherwise until she was finally diagnosed as a chimera. Chris's case raised another question. If his DNA changed, would his future children carry someone else's genetic code? Experts say no sperm should not be affected by bone marrow transplants. However, in Chris's case, semen tests showed donor DNA. Doctors speculated this was due to his prior vasectomy, which might have altered how cells functioned. Human chimerism isn't always caused by medical procedures. In some cases, a vanishing twin during pregnancy can result in one embryo absorbing the other's DNA. Similarly, women often retain fetal DNA long after childbirth called microchimerism, which appears in around 63% of mothers, even into old age. Identifying a chimera isn't easy. In 2015, a newborn's DNA and blood type didn't match the father's. Genetic testing showed the father was biologically the child's uncle. According to experts, chimerism often goes unnoticed and is typically discovered only through chance events like this. Chris's case has changed many people's opinions about DNA tests. Previously viewed as infallible, DNA evidence now has acknowledged limitations due to chimerism. While chimerism doesn't impact health, it challenges how forensic science interprets genetic data. Chris Long recovered from his AML. He is now healthy and experiences no issues as a chimera. He is completely innocent. He told The Independent that he planned a trip to Germany to thank his donor for saving his life. 